Amanda Tapping. Hello. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Oh, lovely. Um, I know you're expecting Rick also, and he is uh, just finishing up his photo ops, but I didn't want you to have to wait for Rick, because who knows? <laughs> so I thought I'd just come out first, and we can just have a bit of fun before he gets here. But, um, <laughs> uh, oh man, it's so great to be back here. Thank you so much for having us, and um, hi. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I don't know, do we want to just start with some questions or what, oh, I guess we do. There's a bright light on you and you're ready. Sweet, let's Hi. do it. Hi. Um, oh, first of all, I forgot my black shoes, so I apologize. Um, I love you, but I would prefer to wait for Richard. <laughs> so, <laughs> I would have a question for you. Okay, great, thank you. <laughs> wait for Richard. <laughs> You'll be waiting. Right. Uh, squeeze and yeah. All right. <laughs> it wasn't a video, so I'm trying to <laughs> say uh, Thank you very much for being such a great role model to thank so you. many young women as a scientist and as a warrior. Um, kicking ass. Thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. My question um, you have been doing a lot of directing. Yes. And you, I'm not sure, did you start with it when you did, uh, when you still were on Stargate? Yes. And I was, um, oh, there he is. I'll let you finish it. Richard. Ah! I got my hands dirty. I'm a little early. Sorry. No, it's all good. It's all good. These people, they just want everything. And they deserve it. And I can give them as much as I got. I got uh, what, uh, oh, that's your good anyway, side. Anyway, I'm in the middle of a question. Sorry. I'm sorry. Excuse me, Rick. <laughs> What's your question? Uh, I nearly forgot. Oh, I remember. Um, Amanda, you, yes. you started directing uh, yes. during, uh, while you were still working on Stargate. And yes. How did you know how to do it? Oh, I had the best uh, PhD in how to direct television by sitting on set and watching all the Stargate. What? Uh, watching all the Stargate directors. So I took the opportunity. Um, I directed in season seven, and so I spent my time following different departments around. I followed the grips, I followed the electrics, special effects, everyone. And so I got a really good sense of how people do what they do and why. And uh, I had asked, I think, in season two to direct, and finally in season seven they gave me my shot. And uh, yeah, it was fantastic. So I, I was very lucky. I had a family of crew who were willing to teach me everything they knew. And then I, f I shadowed different directors on other shows before I did Stargate. Martin Wood, um, I shadowed him on Jeremiah and through prep and shoot and post and Brad Wright let me do uh, sit in the edit suite. And so I, I really got a great education. I was very fortunate. And might, might I interject? This is one of the brightest women I've ever met. What? I agree. I mean, uh, astoundingly smart and savvy and uh, pretty. <laughs> All those things uh, kind of helped her become um, Canada's leading um, director. I almost said female director. <laughs> but that's improper these days, right? She's really smart and knows what she's doing, and everybody knew she would succeed beyond 
our wildest imagination. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Thank you, Willy Wonka. Um, <laughs> thank you, Rick. That's lovely. Thank you. Thank you. For what? Thanks. What did I do? <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Hello. Hi. <laughs> oh, hi. Good to see you. Yeah, uh, I have two questions actually. Um, um, one is to Richard. It's a hockey question. Uh, I'm from Sweden, and oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right. <laughs> uh, and throughout the ages, we had many good uh, hockey players uh, who played in the NHL. Uh, so my question to you, Richard, is which is your favorite Swedish hockey player and why? Right now or uh, any, no, any time? Any time. Oh, uh, uh, he played for the Maple Leafs, Toronto Maple Leafs. Borja Salmi? No. No. Nope. Was bigger, he Swedish? Bigger Borja Salmi. Um, number 40, I think. Uh, Okay, wait. Uh, the Maple Leafs, okay. Um, well, I'm not that good with the NHL, actually. I'm mean, just following the lo local domestic league in Sweden, but... I, God, I wish I could remember his name. He was big, hulking, beautiful... Forsberg? Huh? Forsberg? Forsberg. Him too, Forsberg, but... <laughs> a bigger Forsberg. Big, a bigger, okay. Scrapping, I think he was a defenseman. Anybody? <laughs> yeah, but bigger. That's what I said. If only somebody had a oh. small handheld device that could look up that information really quickly. Yeah, yeah, true, true. <laughs> no, people are looking it up for you, oh, Rick. Good. Don't worry. I was going to say, I'll, I'll Google it, but <laughs> we'll get back to you. All on right, that one. thanks. But my condolences at the IIHF. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. And to Germany, I'm sorry about your game tonight. Yeah. Against the U.S. <laughs> no. Are you, though, are you really sorry? No, I'm not at all. <laughs> and who, who's the other? Uh, Latvia? And... Not Canada. Canada. Not Canada. They lost two games. How could they be in? <laughs> the United States hasn't lost any games. Well, good for you. <laughs> you must be thrilled. <laughs> I'm Swedish. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> sorry, this has been a total waste of time. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I will, it'll come to me. All right, and, and then I have a quick uh, story question as well, uh, and it's about the filming locations. Um, I know the British Columbia, the forest there, uh, you film there a lot, and I was wondering, of course, you're professionals, uh, but do you ever feel like, uh-oh, like not this forest again in British, British Columbia, or was not it ever boring for you guys? I mean, not this big, gorgeous, green valley and mountainous forest again? <laughs> yeah. But for that a hundred times, so... Yeah, it became a bit of a joke that all the planets in the universe had yeah. evergreen trees and really good air. Um, <laughs> and, and now, like, we had a sand dune we got to film in, and a, we had a bunch of different locations that don't exist anymore because of urbanization. But uh, the forest, the forest is always there. And it was, a th it was wonderful to work. Uh, we we went, drove up mountains and shot in this beautiful, pristine forest. It was amazing. But yes, the entire universe looks like British Columbia. <laughs> All right. Thank so you. So crazy. Hello. Hi. So in the Hello. pilot, in the pilot to Stargate, there is this famous dialogue where you, Amanda, uh, uh, improvised the MacGyver line. I wanted to know, 
having you both here, how did the dialogue feel for either party of this? I was scared out of my tree to actually say it. <laughs> I was like, what was the line? It was, uh, it was supposed to be jerry-rig. Okay. We can jerry-rig it to the, and I said, we could MacGyver it, and they kept it in. <laughs> and Rick gave me a look. <laughs> Probably best moment in the series. But. Yeah, and then on the on the ice cave uh, in solitudes, when I improvised that whole MacGyver McGadget McGimmick, <laughs> Mr. McUseless, um, that was we were in a refrigerated stage, so it was actually icy, like it was really cold, and the director said, "Hey, if you have any chance to have fun, have some fun," and that was when you crawled your way up to the dial home device and, uh, and you were really powerfully emoting and I, uh, <laughs> I said ah, those that line. were the days <laughs> when was it that I said I swear it's my firearm that was in that show too oh in that show yeah yeah and there is a thing because we we had to stay close together for body heat and one of the crew members said well you know if you guys were serious about body heat you wouldn't be wearing any clothes <laughs> and I was like little soon in the series for that, methinks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I'm thinning. <laughs> hi, Amanda and Rick. Hi. Oh, hi. Hi, Claire. <laughs> hi, Amanda. Uh, which goals did you have as teenagers? And did you meet all of them? Which idols? Goals. Goals. Dolls. Goals. 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 Goals, yes. Oh, goals. I was like, dolls? I had G.I. <laughs> Joe and Barbie, but... Um, Barbie, for sure. But I had G.I. Joe, too. <laughs> he had cooler Jeeps and stuff. Um, my goal was to be an actress, and my goal was to be a director. Hashtag winning, I guess. <laughs> What? And the same question for Rick. I, on the other hand, <laughs> strive to be a juvenile delinquent. <laughs> winning. No. Hashtag winning. Yeah. Um, no, I actually wanted to be a, a forest ranger. I wanted to work in the forests and mountains and have, have a little house up on that the stilts and, you know, call girls and stuff and <laughs> no I, I wanted to work with animals and and conservation stuff I didn't know it was conservation then but trees and bushes and shrubbery <laughs> and that kind of stuff I, I just leaned in that direction okay thank you and you ended up working in forests for a long time <laughs> sure. it's perfect Thank you. Hello. Hello. Thank you for being here. Um, my question is to um, Amanda. Um, coming from a show like Stargate, which is a huge show, successful for years, moving to Atlantis, and then doing your own thing with Sanctuary. How was that for you? Great show, by the way. Had Thank so you. much fun. Um, but the change of production, I think, was quite severe because um, SG-1 and Atlantis was BC forests and everything, and Sanctuary was 99% green screen? Yeah. Uh, I think when we first started Sanctuary, it was about 75% green screen. It was, as my character Helen Magnus would say, a huge leap of faith. <laughs> so leaving the Stargate franchise was really scary, but it was necessary. Um, and yeah, it was, it, we shot on green screen, we started out as a web series, and then became a television series, and I, I think we were incredibly fortunate to have done as much as we did. We did 59 episodes, and it was really nice to be a part of the creative, and be an executive producer who like looked at edits, and talked with the network, <laughs> uh, and dealt with the money guys, because we were independently financed, so it was a big learning curve, but it was an amazing experience, and Damien and, and Martin and I just, like, we were like sponges, we just took it all in, it was incredible, it was an incredible time. 
and the result was great. Really Thank cool. you. She won't brag about this, but the, the, she's won awards for all that stuff that she said that I couldn't hear because of the echo. <laughs> awards. Very accomplished woman. Rick. Aw. Well, you know, there's later. <laughs> Hi, it's Hi. me again. She's uh, waiting for you. Yeah. I could hear her. As I was coming down the steps. I'm waiting for Rick. In no, the back. I love okay, it. It's all good. It's all good. Now it's perfect. Um, I met uh, Rick earlier today at the meet and greet, and I had a special question. Um, today is my birthday, and my special question was if you both can sing me a birthday song. If everyone joins us, this what's your name? Is so lovely for me. What's your name? Annie. 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 Ready, everybody? Everybody. Three, two, one. Happy birthday to you. Ow! Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Happy birthday, dear Annie. Happy birthday to you and many more. But not too many. Thank you so much. <laughs> Happy birthday. Now, go start drinking at the bar. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. And... Uh, can you? Oh, yeah. Um, you've probably been asked this question so many times, but I'm going to try and make it a little bit more fun for you. So could you tell us the best piece of advice you've ever been given can be about work, life, um, all sorts of things. But can you do it in an accent of your choice? I have one word to say for that. Oh. You're asking for performance. Yeah. That's unfair. Please. Um, my parents always said to me, and I'll do my dad, don't ever be rude. Don't be rude. Be kind, don't be rude. Because people don't like rude people. It's like, all right, Dad. Eat your veggies. <laughs> Eat your damn greens. Thank you. Period. <laughs> Eat your peas. Yeah. Mushy peas. Hello. Hello. Um, I don't really have a question, so uh, sorry for wasting everyone's time, but I wanted to say, uh, Richard, back in my teenage years, um, that was long before binge watching was a thing, but I did binge watch every episode of MacGyver, including the TV movies, and since that time, uh, I'm always carrying a Swiss Army knife with me. And uh, this might sound cheesy, and I can't do anything with it uh, but hurt myself, but uh, I still wanted to thank you for being a role model for me. <laughs> during, the, during the course of shooting MacGyver, I broke 144 <laughs> of those little pocket knives. Because be there's a lot of time between takes, and if it was being utilized and was around on set, I'd play with it, and yes. yeah, I learned how to throw, and I, it's so imbalanced, it's impossible to, to really perfect that. But I also sliced open two fingers, one of which was dangling. Uh, it's the one where I'm with, no, you don't want to. But I did this and it just folded right on over that finger, and I looked at it, gushing blood. I'm in the next shot. <laughs> Lunch. When, uh, when we were shooting the pilot, I don't know if you remember this, Rick, but uh, we were all living in the same hotel, 
and we all went for dinner. I think you were probably living somewhere else, but we all went for dinner, and then Rick and I went for a walk down Robson Street. And, you and I did? Yeah, we yeah. did. And uh, yeah, it was really memorable uh, <laughs> for me. But I had never seen MacGyver, and my only frame of reference for MacGyver was The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was like, oh, MacGyver, MacGyver, MacGyver. And so we were walking, and Rick said, you said to me, I think this is going to be a big show. And I went, wow, well, that's cool, and we're walking. And I said, so what was it like, like MacGyver? And no sooner had I said that than this band drove up Robinson Street, and these guys stuck their head out the window, and they went, MacGyver! <laughs> and I was like, oh, like that. <laughs> okay. okay. Everywhere we went, everywhere we went, MacGyver! I'm a guy who delinquents yell at. <laughs> yeah. But that's, that was my sort of first taste of, oh, he's more than just that guy on The Simpsons. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I think I walked her to her door, too. <laughs> and said goodnight and <laughs> ran away. Hi. Uh, first of all, also a really big fan. Thank you for being here. Big fan of Stargate SG-1 and of MacGyver. Yes. <laughs> And also a big fan of the movie and my question, so the Stargate movie, and my question kind of leans into that because one of you had a role that was already presented in the movie and one of you wasn't. And I want to know what do you think was the scarier part to act out? I know, I, I know, I know, I know, I was kidding. I, it was easy for me. I just, you know, they didn't want me to be Kurt Russell. Couldn't make my hair do that. And he smoked. And uh, so we got rid of both of those things. And you see what you see today. Looks good. Yeah. I mean it. Nice try, babe. <laughs> it does not. It does. I, I, I was lucky because my character wasn't in the movie, so she could be whatever we made her become. Um, but I think it might be scarier to actually try to fill the shoes and change the shoes of a character that already exists and is loved. So. Oh. You know, that, a side note to this um, uh, notion, Kurt Russell came on set yes, one did. time, <laughs> and she swooned, He's and so cute. I had met him once before with, um, uh, uh, he and Goldie were, lived by where I lived in um, California, Southern California. And I was, back in the day when I actually did exercise, um, was running my path up in the mountains, and uh, the two of them came down with their dog, and of course, immediately, I'm to the dog. I'm just in the dirt with, and he came up to me, he was a Bernese, I think, and just lapping me up, and I said, God, I love this dog, and I look up, and it's, you know, we, I'm already in a conversation with them, don't know it's them, but anyway, flash forward from that chance meeting to uh, Kurt coming on, um, is that his name, Kurt? Yeah. <laughs> Came on to uh, our set and, um, you know, long story short, uh, he said he really liked what we were doing and uh, kind of really respected the, the transition we had made to series because it, it's a slightly different animal. Um, but 
he made a point of saying that, and I really like what you're doing, except for the hair. <laughs> and I said, get lost, get lost. He was lovely and, yeah. and super cute. And we were shooting a scene in the control room and he was just kind of hanging out while we were filming. And he was in my eye line and I couldn't get my lines out because I was so distracted <laughs> by Kurt Russell. And uh, so I kept trying to, and I kept, and finally I was like, uh, and he went, oh. and I said, you're in my eye line and I can't, I can't, and I can't believe I asked Kurt Russell to move out of my eye line. <laughs> <laughs> And he left, and I was like... <laughs> he moved into mine. He moved into Rick's. And we've been happy ever he since. He was lovely. And it was during a time when he was shooting the uh, Great Great Land? Great Graceland movie. So he has had the makings of he had the Elvis. Elvis. Yeah. So I didn't recognize him. Yes. <laughs> Kurt Russell. He's got nothing on you, though, Rick. There you go. Certainly doesn't have the hair. <laughs> I hope that answered your question. It did. Thank you very much. You shouldn't let us ramble like this. <laughs> this it is what fun. we do. We just ramble. <laughs> Thank you. Any further questions? You again. <laughs> I had you. Go ahead. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say that Stargate SG-1 was, is, is very important in my life. Um, about 10, 15 years ago, I was going through a really bad time. Like, really, really bad. And I'm not joking when I say that Stargate saved my life. There were times where th there were times where I was at the end of the rope, and if I if I had the sort of enough in me to put on an episode, it was enough to calm me down, cheer me up, make me laugh, make me energized to you know keep on living essentially um so i just wanted to thank you both for being without realizing being there for for me and i'm sure that there's a lot of other people who have been in the same situation and have found that to be helpful And, and after that massive outpouring of emotion, which is not normal for a British person. Very brave. I can't think of a question, so I will just yield the floor to someone else. Thank you. Uh, Hi, hello, it's so nice to see you again and adding to that question, you changed my life as well because I still remember the countless times I visited the filming of your show for the German TV Highlights magazine. Oh my God, so, hi! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I brought a bunch of Ritter Sport chocolate for you. See you tomorrow. So, uh, it's all here. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I followed, of course, the negotiations about the future of Stargate. In, in the morning, I did a panel about the possible future. So, uh, I guess you are the most qualified persons to maybe tell us what's going on. And before you answer the questions, I have a lot meetings in the past with Brad Wright, Peter DeLuise, Martin Wood, and all the other guys. So if I were the boss of Stargate, of course, a new show, but you, Amanda, would be, for one point, the perfect showrunner. And being you as the general of the Stargate command, it would be the most logical character development. So 
What's your opinion? What can you tell us? I, oh, uh, I can't tell you what's happening with it because I, I don't know, but Brad and I, have, uh, we're very good friends and we've certainly talked about if there were uh, another Stargate to come out, that I, my involvement and he would like me to direct it and be a part of it and be in it to a degree. And uh, yeah, heck <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, you know, I, Stargate has been such a huge, huge part of my life uh, and yours too, maybe. Too. Um, <laughs> and the fact that, you know, we started filming 25 years ago and we're still here talking to all of you is like, I can't think of a better word, but it's, I'm gobsmacked. And so uh, I'm so grateful. And so if it were to come back, I would never look that gift horse in the mouth. I would absolutely jump on board. But uh, as for what's happening, Amazon owns MGM now. MGM has yeah. been owned by so many different people. So I, don't, I, I honestly couldn't tell you, but certainly Brad reached out to me and said, if it does, would you? And I was like, ah, yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, did, uh is Brad Wright still involved? Because he did write a few years ago uh, a pilot. He script. did. It was great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I don't know. I, again, yeah. I don't know. So I'm looking forward to meet you. I will ask your contact person and wait for the chocolate. It's a nice continuation of a sort of running gag, and it is being started because I really wondered that you guys were so friendly and all the crazy stuff I witnessed for myself you are doing. And I said, do these guys ever finish one scene today because they are so hilarious. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. We had a lot of fun. All. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Nice to see you. I, it just it, it, as a, an addendum to um, what Amanda was saying is that uh, my conversations with Brad have been such that he, he's starting to feel like a liaison to um, to the future of Stargate because it's out of his hands. For the mostly, it's just out of his hands. He um, it's in the networks. I forget. I don't know who ended it up with the property, but. It was MGM. Anybody else? In, it's up to the net, so. it's up to the um, studio. Apparently, that's what's standing in the way. And it's um, he doesn't really know what you know what the uh, approach should be anymore. He's he's as frustrated as all of us. So, um, and I wish I had a name, just one. Or, all right, two names. That I could name drop here to, to for you all to just for all write letters to. Yep, tons of letters or storm the Bastille. Hey, and, if Stargate did come back, would you be living in your cabin? I, I, I asking for a friend. <laughs> I, I I think I'd be a forest ranger. Be a forest ranger. Wondering. We can only fantasize at this point. I'd love to do it. I've been asked to. Uh, don't mean to throw it in my court, but I will. Um, I've been asked to about MacGyver re, re booting, and oh, stop. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I would love it. I would if I had the energy to do it, and you know, cared a little more. <laughs> Is that bad? Um, I would love to see a seventy five-year-old MacGyver trying to do all the crap that he did. You know, just to open the Swiss Army knife. Yeah, and <laughs> slicing the other fingers off. It's just uh, dropping stuff all the time. I think it would be a hilarious uh, venue. So, write letters. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, Rick. Hi, Amanda. Just yeah. so you know, we've been given a dictum. Is that we did, we a, a dictum? Can we do three more? 
Yeah, we can do three more. It they says said last, last question. question, please. That doesn't seem right. So, well, three more? Can we do three more? Three more. We'll, yeah. do, we'll do four more. Okay. Four hi. More. <laughs> uh, hi, hi, Rick. Hi, Amanda. Um, um, I'm still imagining this idea of this forest ranger, for example. <laughs> um, and there have been many um, series which came back after like 30 years, so why not? Um, but I, I was coming here for like that because I want to say I like the uh, humor in Stargate and uh, also you being here at FedCon, like, like walking in front of the um, screen like, hey, is that me and stuff? And, and some similarities which also I've seen on the show, or uh, funny stuff like the ice cave scene you mentioned, or this, oh, you're doing crosswords, celestial body with ten letters, probably some people know it. Um, or my favorite episode, with a, uh, like uh, um, this time loop episode, which was totally hilarious. <laughs> it's my favorite one. We got to kiss. Um, my question is simply, do you have uh, anything uh, more uh, really funny to tell, like from experience? No. Um, <laughs> okay. The humor on Stargate was really driven by mm. this gentleman here. Um, mm. Because it's, it read as a very serious kind of pilot, and Rick mm. insisted that there be humor. And it, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I didn't have any choice at that time. Mm -hmm. I didn't, first of all, it, we ran the risk starting out of being very, uh, like, serious, mm -hmm. by the ropes science fiction show. And that can mm -hmm. drag on and on. Um, mm -hmm. I not having a great range as an actor was able to um, fall back on what I knew, which was class clowns kind of stuff, with respect. But I had to learn my lesson um, by, we used to have these things called table reads. And um, I used to improvise crap and go for the laugh and all that. Mm. Brad took me, that lasted a few weeks. And then Brad took me aside and he, he said, you know, you're being very disrespectful to the writers. And that, just that sentiment expressed to me echoed and stuck with me so deeply that I immediately changed my behavior and let the writer's words be talked, spoken, you um, mean you, you mean you're doing fun on the scenes as being uh, seen I, as disrespectful? No, I used to do it during the table reads, which oh. is a, it's a very selfish endeavor for mm. me to, indulgence, I mean, mm. um, and I just, from talking to Brad and being read basically the riot act about respecting the writer, which mm -hmm. should be, it. they should be respected above all in that business. I get it, yeah. Third. Thank you a lot. Yeah. Great having you. But the, the writers ended up writing for Rick's sense of humor, and that's how it worked. Boy, thank you, miss. We said we'd do three more, please. Somebody with this Anybody? one. We can do three you more in the questions. dark. Please, please, please. Because they're all here, and it just seems silly to stop. Yes. Can we do three more questions? Um, or is there somebody else coming on stage after no, us? No, you're it. Oh, you God. are the finale. Sorry, people, we're the it. We're it for the night. She's it. <laughs> She's the it girl. Yes. You can tell um, by my shoes. Is, should we ask one, we'll ask one more question, and then I won't say the words of, of, um, of the other gal from Star Trek, and then we'll F.O. Oh, oh I won't she's, say that. She's so very... One Hi. last question. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Eric. It's so great to see you two on stage. My question is of your post-activism. Uh, you're doing, on the 3rd of June, an online event for mental health, Amanda. I think that's really awesome. And I just wanted to know how that came about and if there are any further events like that. And for Rick, are you planning on any Sea Shepherds events or going on a ship 
or anything else? And if there are no plans, is there anything you would like to do? Well, I, uh, I'll just speak quickly to the mental health. So the companion and I had a conversation over a year ago about things that mattered to me, and one of them was mental health. And part of it was born of the fact that sci-fi fandom is so incredibly supportive and connected, and so many people around the world have made friends through uh, my experience through Stargate, but obviously through other shows, and how... Uh, how essential that connection was, especially at times when people were feeling really, really horrible. And so I said, I think that especially given the last three years in the pandemic and isolation and lack of connection and lack of events like this, that I thought it was just really important to check in and make sure that we were all okay, because we're not all okay. I mean, this new normal has been a big adjustment. and. Um, as somebody who, uh, my eldest brother was, before he passed, was paranoid schizophrenic, and I saw firsthand what mental health, how it affected families, community, and so I just, it's, it's a subject very near and dear to my heart, and I felt like we just, I just wanted to connect and just talk about it, so that it wasn't so taboo, and so that we could say, like your beautiful comment up there um, before, about how important certain things can be to help keep you grounded and keep you here. And I just, uh, it was just, it's just a, a, an, I'm rambling. It's an important topic to me. And I think it's really important that we feel that connection. And that's what it was born of, so. Well, um I think this is going to sound a little bit negative. Um, it's probably going to sound a lot of bit negative. Um, sea Shepherd and Captain Paul Watson parted ways. Um, Paul was essentially kicked out. Um, mm. Sea Shepherd wanted to soften their image a little bit. Paul had a reputation for being quite confrontational if you think ramming ships is confrontational. I don't. And he was, um, oh, he was asked to leave. He is, um, I love Paul a lot, he, um, but he has an ego. If you're watching this anywhere, Paul, you do. <laughs> but um, uh, so he, he, he has started the Captain Paul Watson Foundation, yeah. which is a separate entity from Star or Stargate, <laughs> Seagate, uh, no, Sea Shepherd. Um, sea Shepherd is still thriving and uh, working their campaigns and such. Paul just acquired his first ship um, for his foundation and he's soliciting contributions like he did with, with Stargate, but it's, <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> with Sea Shepherd. But, um, but it's kind of, a, I don't know how many of you even know about Sea Shepherd and Paul Watson's foundation, but um, it's, it's kind of a tough call, like who do you, do you donate to both? That would be ideal. But um, some people feel as though they've been made to make a choice. Um, and so far, I've, I've fallen on the, on the side of Sea Shepherd as the established entity. Um, I still don't know the details of what their policy is um, and what their platform is and when they go out and have confrontations. Paul, you all can pretty much figure out what he's, he's still about, uh, which is fine. It's worked in the past, but I think he's got to soften some edges. It turns people off. Some people it excites. And, um, well, I don't know what, what else to say about that, but uh, I'll, I'll put a word in for both sides at, because I'm, I'm chicken. And, a coward, but um, 
that's kind of what's going on there. The, the merchandise is much better at Sea Shepherd. <laughs> better t-shirts. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, we're going to do two more because we said we'd do four more, so now it's two okay. more, please. Okay. And thank you. Yep. Don't let her push you around like that. Oh, no, Thanks for all the stuff you do. She's got a little gummy on her head, so you have, you know, it's great. <laughs> she can push me around. Thank anytime. you. Thank you, guys. You want another question? Yeah? Yeah? Oh. Up above. Uh, Get it. I'd just like to say thank you very much to both of you for giving us this opportunity to actually meet and greet you, at least at a distance with a microphone. Thank um, you for coming. Thank you. And I would also just like to reiterate how big an influence both of you have been and Stargate and Hall uh, on all of our lives. Uh, me personally, I served in the military and then went on to do astrophysics. Uh, no help to you. <laughs> but with tons of help from you, I mean. And actually, says, I heard I, that but you, not so when you were reading your Captain lines, Dark, uh, uh, Captain you didn't movie. just read the lines <laughs> or learn the lines. You actually did your best effort to learn what it meant. I That's my favorite of all the, uh, that. And the, if you've got the anything feature films. Funny and how interesting it might have been or something like that. Blessedly, they gave all of that stuff you're referring to to her. <laughs> And to her, I mean the smart one. <laughs> but it, it, yeah, I, I had it easy. I, I was reactionary. And part of it was because I didn't have an attention span, much as you've observed today. <laughs> picking microphones apart and picking my head and looking at my hair. How is it? Yeah, but anyway, she got, had the hard part. I took it. I took it very seriously. I didn't want to just spout words. I wanted to understand it. So, um, I studied brief history of time. I read a lot of Stephen Hawking. I, I read a lot of uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and I just was like, I'm going to learn this. And then what I would do is break it down into layman's terms, and then explain it to my husband. <laughs> and if he understood it, then I was like, we're good. Uh, and then um, come to set, and it meant something. It, it came from, and, and because there were so many lines, I had to, it, it, only, it only connected for me if I knew what I was saying. Could I personally blow up a sun now? I don't, I think it's the red button, but. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was important to me to really connect to the material, and it made Sam Carter far more exciting to play because I understood what she was talking about. So absolutely, it's, it was essential, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And she's pretty. I think we have one, one more left, yeah? This is it, make Hello, it good. Hello, you're it. No Close pressure. us big. All right, this question is for both of you, but first of all, I just want to say, when I was a kid, I called to my parents' bed to watch MacGyver when I was nine, every Monday at eight. I was when it was broadcast in Israel, and what really struck me was the pouring kindness of this guy, and it wasn't just MacGyver, it was you, Richard. That and down comes the question, in every character that you play, there's something out of you. What feature or quality or characteristics, characteristics do you think comes out in both of you in your characters? In both of my characters? Or? Both of you, uh, both Amanda and Richard. I don't know. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so, ah! What? That's about it. <laughs> now, it, I, I referenced this earlier about my own self-assessment. I've had a lot of time off. I think a lot too much. Um, but uh, being very as rational, objective as I can be, um, I'm not that great an actor. So I can't tap into a process or uh, a process. And um, so I base a lot of my 
action, reaction, any internal work I do, it's, it's done as Richard with a sheep's clothing on. Wait, I didn't mean sheep. <laughs> Ass, that's what I meant. Ass um, clothing. Um, so that's, you know, you do see a lot of my personality interwoven to somebody else's words. Interwoven? Yeah, that's good. Other people's words in a different costume. <laughs> because, of course, I thought it was a costume ball. That's just it's a costume for us. drama. <laughs> um, I think that Sam and I grew up together. Uh, and I've said this before, but I think that we came into our own as women together. Uh, I am an incredibly... <laughs> what? I don't know. I'm what sitting here. Is it okay? Uh, uh, loyalty, I think, is something that is really important to me, and I, it was very important to Sam. A little bit of a sense of humor um, and an earnestness that I have always had an eagerness to please. Why are you guys laughing? What is going on? I'm not doing anything. I, I'm sitting here. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> it's my sidearm, I swear to God. Uh, <laughs> Getting me in trouble with mom. <laughs> I think, uh, to be 100% to be honest, it was a very symbiotic relationship between Sam and Amanda. And I learned a lot from her, and I think I informed a little bit uh, of her. But yeah, I, especially after 10 seasons, we all kind of became our characters a little bit, and our characters became part of us. I learned to be a lot stronger because of Sam. So yeah, it was a, I feel very Thank fortunate you. to have had that character. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, is that, yeah. are we, you're kicking That's us off now. That's fantastic. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please put it together for Amanda Tapping, Richard Dean Anderson. Vielen Dank, dass ihr euch das Video angesehen habt. Wenn es euch gefallen hat, dann lasst einen Daumen nach oben da. Hier habt ihr nun verschiedene Auswahlmöglichkeiten. Ihr könnt oben links unseren Kanal abonnieren. Oben rechts geht es weiter zu tollen Videos von diesem Event. Unten rechts gelangt ihr zur Internetseite vom nächsten Event. Zu guter Letzt kann ich euch noch den Space Store empfehlen. Hier gibt es alles mögliche an Fanartikeln zu euren Lieblingsserien und Filmen. Bis demnächst auf diesem Kanal.